to say I am feeling a little bit perplexed here. I just, uh, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe Hudson had some kind of a fail safe for too much oil. I put some Lucas in it and I had me a camel sized puddle underneath. Uh, kept driving it and now it ain't leaking. So I don't know what the deal was with that. I run my thermometer, digital thermometer over it and everything is spot on when it comes to temperatures. Uh, I know my coolant leak is from this little gap here, but at the same time, why would it be hitting the overflow? So I'm taking a stab in the dark thinking maybe there's no thermostat in the car. Uh, maybe that's causing, you know, too much pressure, or too much flow, and it's pushing it up through the overflow. At any rate, finding a replacement uh, upper and lower hose is typical Hudson fashion. It's about $400, well, no, I'm exaggerating. It's about probably $40 worth of shipping for a $20 part. So I digress and go to AutoZone. And uh, I've picked up a E7-1911 or a 62-110 or 200-37322 hose. And I'm hoping this bad boy will fit here like so and then down while this one will fit somehow so at any rate we're about to dump some coolant That's a pretty fair deal for being able to go up to the local parts store and pick one up. No shipping and handling, no price gouging, just a hose. Cut it in half and I got the perfect top, perfect lower. process of trying to figure out how to do this 
of course, the factory replacement thermostat is slim chance to none of finding. Uh, inside the middle of this, there was a spring and the actual thermostat mechanism. Wild Rick from Wild Rick Restorations said just tear that out. And you'll see a little hole, and I'm assuming that's it up in there because he says uh, that center hole takes a one and a quarter inch freeze plug. You plug it up, and then you get a big block Mopar thermostat. And I was having issues with this little brass sleeve, so. The best that I can figure is I've got to tear that sleeve out, put that plug up in that center hole there, and then my big block thermostat from a Mopar should fit in there. And he said to drill an eighth inch hole in the side of the thermostat so that it won't cavitate. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I went and I found a thermostat for a 1970 Dodge Charger with a 440, 180 degree temperature. And uh, we'll see if, that, if, if, if it'll work. That's part numbers. So O'Reilly's 3478 Murray. Keep your fingers crossed. That's one way to dig it. And I'm sure it was probably not the recommended way. There, uh, back to being fat again. Oh man. I mean, over-engineered at its finest. Hey, hey, hey. And then this little stupid piece comes out and you're left with just that. So clean this up now and I'm gonna I'm gonna make this video for somebody like me and I have never ever worked on a Hudson before and there is absolutely the only in how do I put it it ain't 1950 no more there are so many better mediums like this video for getting information out <clears throat> than trying to spend a week digging into old manuals that may or may not be applicable to what I'm trying to do. This is a thermostat housing for a 1954 Hudson 308 cubic inch inline six. They don't make these gaskets no more, but you can find them and the shipping's gonna cost you more than the gasket. So it's gonna be homemade. Uh, but like I was saying earlier, Wild Rick says that you get a one and a quarter, and I'm doing this, I know. And we're gonna see, oh yeah, look at that. Look at that, that's just gonna fit down in there just so so probably not that's how far it fits down in there that's pretty good so evidently this is a bypass goes up in here and you can see the light down here at the bottom shining around what is an inside kind of bale cone and so what comes through this port 
goes up through here and comes back into this to bypass the thermostat. For some reason, I have no idea. And it comes out in this center, uh, what I'm calling an inner bell. And I'm sure that's not what Hudson called it, but at any rate, this is the thermostat housing. And uh, while Rick says to plug that, so on we go, plugging that. So that ain't going nowhere. Now, the thermostat, just in case you were wondering, because when this, this stupid over-engineered thermostat, oh my goodness, what an over-engineered thermostat. When it finally comes out, there is a ledge here. So this is the, this is a thermostat that Wild Rick recommended for a big block Mopar. And uh, I went with a 1970 Dodge Charger with a 440 and it's, uh, it fits pretty good. He, he did say that you want to drill an eighth inch hole to prevent cavitation. So that's what I'm about to do. About an eighth of an inch. I don't know if there's any purpose in cutting this hole out. We blocked off the port here inside the housing. So what's the purpose of, you know, at any rate, let's cut a gasket. That by no means is a winning combination for a beauty show, but hopefully it'll not pour and freeze all over everything. Now that I got RTVs, RTV silicone on everything and all enough. I mean on everything. I got it on my hose, I got it on my camera, I got it on my hand, I got it on my glove. Mm.
15 other ways. There was a, the reason I glopped that silicone on so thick was that on that thermostat, OD or outer diameter, there was just a hair that could have stood to have been shaved off. Uh, and it, I mean, it is what it is. I'm, I'm not doing brain surgery here. If it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. I'm gonna put this silicone, let it soak and dry overnight so that when I come back over and finish tightening it down, it's got a good seal and I won't have to worry about it squirting out the sides anymore. <coughs> Everything's nice and dried up now. Put a couple twists on it, tighten it down. We'll squeeze all that stuff out. <coughs> I hope I ain't messing up <coughs> leaving that bypass covered, but uh, that was my understanding. You cut a, or you drill an eighth inch hole in the side of the thermostat and uh, put a one and a quarter inch plug in the top of the bypass. So I just kind of figured what's the point of having an opening, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. <coughs> the other thing is, is <coughs> my temperature sending unit ain't working and uh, I don't know, maybe it's bad. It'd be nice if it's just a bad connection. It is pretty loose. I wonder if I could put, I'm gonna take it out. It's <coughs> a little box of goodies I ordered from New Delhi, imported from New Delhi. It's got a <coughs> fuel sending unit, comes with it. What is which is for it? That's the fuel sending unit or the fuel send fuel gauge. Good grief! One of these is a temperature gauge oil. It's funny because back in the day, if you uh, didn't buy American. You, you were, it was a, there was a stigma that came along with it that you must be sophisticated because you had it all imported, it was imported. Now it's, uh, it's frowned upon, but I did, uh, they gave me a tracking number, so I tracked it and I know as Americans, we're all about America as we should be, but I'd say it was pretty stinking cool to watch <clears throat> my, set of gauges on the 20th of December, no less, start out in New Delhi, take this out, and by the 24th, it was sitting in Atlanta, and I was able to track it uh, move by move. It was, it was, I thought it was cool. Also th thought it was funny that uh, everybody back in the day <clears throat> if you had something really fancy, you had to tell everybody it was imported. Imported. Now it's, I come from a foreign country. If we only knew where our stuff really come from, we'd be, now of course, Of course, that ain't gonna be nowhere near the right size. That's why I started to not even order it. It's almost the right length. Pretty well spot on with the length. It would be nice if this thing could get it working.
that moment when you realize that moment when you realize what a stupid 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 oh man i can't say it enough you go through i, I have source the little brass fit in to make it work i wired it through the firewall and made sure i had a nice little grommet going through all the crap in the dash to fish through the wires I even mounted the stupid bracket and i looked down now i've ordered this <laughs> oh man i ordered this all the way from New Delhi, and I tracked it like a crackhead waiting on the dealer to show up. I, I tracked this sucker all the way from New Delhi to its little airports and all this crap overseas and all the way to Atlanta, all the way up to North Georgia. And when I'm like, all right, let's pour some coolant in it and see what the temperature runs. I look down at this stupid gauge. What What's wrong with the picture here? What's wrong with that picture? It's in Celsius. What stupid? <laughs> oh, and I ordered the Fahrenheit one. Oh, stupid. Okay, all right. I have gathered myself. My sincerest apologies on my rant on how stupid this is. And it is still stupid, but at least... Uh, it's still going to read like I've, I've got 180 degree temp thermostat in here. So if this gauge was topped out at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, it's useless. But I just seen the C on there in which I don't really agree with that either because I ordered a Fahrenheit gauge. I made sure that it was Fahrenheit, not Celsius. But at any rate, I can live with that. 212 uh, Fahrenheit is equal to 100 Celsius. So I, that's fine. If it runs top dead center, that's fine. Man, what a mess. Well, just learn from my failure. If you're buying one of these Indian imitated British origin temperature gauges man they're not right this one is reading uh -huh. that's reading 120 degrees celsius which is about 250 or 248 in fahrenheit what a piece of garbage learn from my mistakes don't buy those gauges we'll come right out here and check this out 68 degrees, 150. It's garbage. Didn't come with instructions. Didn't come with any mountain hardware. It's garbage. It, even the sending unit. Even the sending unit uh, wouldn't fit. And so that you that whole battery of obstacles. And I shouldn't be saying it, and I'll probably edit most of this out, but it's like one stupid thing after the other. And, I, and I'm, I'm not talking bad about the guys that like them because that's awesome. And yet, I, it's like a different, you know, it's like, it's like deer hunters, okay? You got the American deer hunter or turkey hunter or fisherman okay 
they go out and they do what they do and they find that satisfaction, okay? And I respect it. I completely understand it. But taking that deer hunter guy, you know, the 2 a.m. Waffle House guy that goes out and he, him and his buddies, they get Waffle House first thing in the morning, way long before the sun comes up, and they're out in the deer stand with nature and silence, and I get it. But comparing that to the fox and the hound guy, you know, like, they got their tweed coats on, little, little jacket things, and their boots up to their knees, and their little uh, riding helmet, and they're up on top of the hill, and they send the dogs out to chase the fox, and they're like, sipping tea, you know, riding on their horse, sipping tea down this big, beautiful open field. And there's a, com it's the same thing, but it's a completely different air. It's not, it ain't North Georgia hunting, it's over yonder hunting, but that's the, the stark difference between what I'm dealing with here and what I'm accustomed to dealing with, which is Chevrolet, Ford, Dodge, Buick. You know, sometimes you just gotta step back, take a break from working on stuff and I'm not that type of person. I feel like I'm procrastinating. So what I've harebrained is uh, I'm gonna take a step back, but it's gonna be at JNC Automotive. <laughs> they gonna put me in an exhaust and we're gonna get to check out some of their pro projects and uh, some of the cool stuff they got in their driveway. And uh, so y'all jump on the short bus with me. We're gonna mosey over and take a gander.